Hello, welcome to Life with Paji. It has been a long, long time. Long time. You guys probably have known me from Outcast from the 853, but some of you guys probably know me from here. Life with Paji. Um, used to be Fry's Lover. I hate writing and I'm horrible at journals. Like, but I do want to remember what have I've, you know, have done, and and I I'm horrible at like catching up with people because I keep thinking I'm bothering them or like I don't know like we probably have something better to do I don't know, but this is to anyone that wants to catch up with me. A little recap. Okay, because it's been a while. It's been a long time. Um, I've been doing like little videos here and there, but never really had the time to actually plan out my content. I did it for Outcast A53 because, you know, it started out as having fun, but I really got into it when we realized we had a lot of like fans and we actually had a lot of people waiting on us these things you know like ones we hit 100k followers on instagram for outcast and i was like so proud of us we had our first meet and greet in new york city which i'm so happy like i was so nervous in the beginning but it all like it all worked out so yeah let's do a little recap uh you know i was in college fooling around i don't know if you remember like some videos college be like um, yeah, I went to college in University of Macau on communications and media. You know, I thought it was a easy pass for me since I did videos anyways since I was 12 years old, you know, with Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> Do not search teen corn news. Do not search it. Then after college, I uh, worked in Macau as a overseas worker because I never was a resident in Macau. You know, um, immigrate. I was born in Macau, grew up there, but the problem is Macau is such a small city. The requirements on having residency there is not just you got to born, be born there, but you, your parents got to be also residents. And I think it's that way in Portugal too. Like I think they adapted the Portuguese residency thing that way too, but it worked out for them since it's such a small city. And then they kind of blew up into Asia's Las Vegas, and now it's like even harder to be at all residency. Don't even like think about it type of thing. I mean, Hong Kong is hard enough. Like, if you guys know the, you know, the issue of Filipino workers there. Like, I grew up, you know, having to, like, every time when I like complain a little bit about Macau or something. Some people, just some people, not all, they'll be like, why don't you go back to your country now? Um, you know, it's like, you gotta be thankful to be there. Like, cause obviously like in Philippines, you don't earn a lot. And a lot of people, they would go to Macau to earn or, or Hong Kong. Yeah, but the way of living life there as a overseas worker can be pretty rough. And yeah, I think like we should try to shine a light on that sometimes. Uh, but. I, I mean, a lot of people don't want to shine a light on it because, you know, it's still a job and a lot of people are proud of this job and nothing like to not be proud of. It's I'm talking about the people that make it rougher than it needs to be. All right. Because, hey, you know, people want to travel. Why not? Right. And um, a lot of uh no offense, like Americans or Europeans would go to Asia to teach for travel and to teach, right? To have like an open mind, to, to broaden their horizons and to open like perspectives. Like what's the difference of this? But yeah, I found a job. Uh, first job, I was lucky enough to find a marketing relating job because uh, of connections, you know, but I was still like um, hired as a like overseas worker. So I had to go back to Philippines three months which I never lived in but thankfully I had my friend there we hung out there for three months and then until my working visa my working visa finally worked <laughs> working visa finally worked you have one job but yeah anyways um 
a little three month process, but they didn't, they never told me how long it was going to be. So it's like, and I had to pay like a thousand dollar upfront to the agency that was hiring me, you know, like it has to be that process because I was getting hired by this resort in Macau. And yeah, uh, I was a promoter for a nightclub called Pasha. Uh, if y'all know, it's like those cherries. Uh, and practically live my best life, to be honest, in, in that year, because it's like, <laughs> if you're a college kid, that is probably one of the best jobs you can ever have. You know, like I really lucked out on that. Um, me speaking, being able to speak Cantonese and read, like write really came in handy. And the fact, that hey networking really helped you know like those people that are like always clubbing partying and stuff like that like i know some of y'all be like oh what do they do in their time oh look at them like all they do is party like stop hating sometimes it works like networking works in the club well, fast forward the club closed down so what do i what was i to do if i didn't have a job my family all lived in macau still you know my parents work in Macau and my my little sister is still going to school in Macau. <sighs> Spoiler alert, they probably have to go through the same shit. But anyways, let's not think about that yet. Yeah, let's not think about that yet because let's not worry twice in a row. Am I right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I screwed it around, try to find a job, and hey, the same resort. Like the only way for me to not leave. Macau and having to come back to renew my contract, you know, like getting hired again, um, was to stay in the same re resort. And so the only job that they would hire me as at that time, they didn't have any nightclub or whatever anymore. So the only job they would hire me as was a housekeeping dispatcher. Yeah. Housekeeping dispatcher. And, you know, like, I had no idea what to do about hospitality. Like, it was like crazy. The, the only reason why they hired me was because I speak Cantonese and I can write and but I was hired as a Filipino so it's like you know I had to go through the housekeeping trainings I had to go to the room and follow like the housekeepers as well and during the time it was so difficult like the supervisor made it harder than it should be I was like can I wear a sweater to cover my tattoos because that time I already had tattoos I'm so crazy like I was like oh I can work in the club like in this club for a while you know i don't care i can get tattoos this industry wouldn't care <laughs> little did you know i was in a housekeeping job and i had to cover it and dude i had to, i taped it all right i had to tape it and it would hurt so much to take out the bandage you know if they just let me cover it like i, I wasn't even seeing any gas at that point like I, we were just like i was just following the housekeeping people to see like what are the procedures because as a, as a dispatcher I should know like how is the procedure is so it's like you know like if ever anything like on the phone like I know like visually right because like she knows that I am not a resident and the thing with Macau is that if you hire a resident right you get quotas to hire non-residents for your company it was so difficult the, like the we weren't even gonna face any cus like um, guests like we were not even outside we were underground working all right because it's like under in a computer behind the scenes people so the rule book of the hotel said oh front desk people that actually see you know um, guests get to wear uh, nude color nails and so i was like hey i'm gonna get because i had hard gel and heart if you guys know if you have hard gel um nails you have to keep doing it or it's like you know it's like fragile as f and so I kept doing it. I, kept, I did like nude color. And then this woman, this supervisor come up to me and was like, you have to get those off by tomorrow or you'll get a, a warning. So each worker gets three war warnings, like maximum before like you can get dismissed. I was like, I, but the rule book said, she cut me off and was like, like if that's not off by tomorrow, you're gone. And I was like, okay. Like I, 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 did, like, I couldn't say anything. So I did remove it and it was like flimsy, it hurt. But yeah, like a few months later, they hired a new girl that was a local. Girl showed up with like egg design nails, all right? Cartoon egg. I don't know if you guys know that Japanese cartoon egg, but yeah, that egg. Kid you not, that su same supervisor came over and looked at her nails and was like, Oh my God, so cute. So cute. So cute. I was literally sitting there like, 
in front of the computer like I was I was prepared for the supervisor to give it to her but no nada you know why because they're so scared of this local girl leaving all right because if she leaves they would have to let go of two like um we call it blue card holders which is working visa people yeah so that's that and when i while i was working that it was like unbelievably stressful uh it was a shift job um the thing is like people work like dogs there but they're so happy i knew this woman that just was a nurse from philippines but went to macau to be a housekeeping um, attendant because pay better and it's like less stressful so it is what it is that's the reality and but you know uh during during my clubbing times and like um like towards the end i actually met someone and this someone is the american man that i am with today i met ty that's from ty i mean i met ty like it was great i like fell in love with him like almost immediately to be honest and and then after a year of like dating because i got this job and i was like i'd rather be in philippi i'd rather work with lower pay and live at least like do something that doesn't make me this miserable i told i told ty that he's in the middle of his teaching contract and he's like wait for me like after my contract ends let's go wherever you want to go where, together and so yeah we tried checking places like where my passport my filipino passport would you know be okay like to find a job but anywhere i go i would be a cleaner or a domestic helper no offense to like anyone who does that job i just don't i can't clean even if it's, it has to save my life like i don't know if you see my background here but i am not a tidy person and so it was really hard but like then ty suggested that what about america what about we you know just did it I mean, he was like, well, I see myself, we went, we had the whole talk, like, I see myself with you forever. And I'm like, oh my God, I see myself with you forever. You know, we decided that going to America and, you know, getting the orders of like doing the civil, um, you know, togetherness first. 90 Days Fiance, it was the fastest way for us to get together and not do long distance, which we would hate. Some people might see it as not romantic to do that, but I see it as one of the most romantic th things to do together. And yeah, and to, to save money together, to actually have a wedding together that has all our families together, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <sighs> like we both saw like that I would get the best opportunity in America, which fast forward to today, five years later, I am a resident. I'm an American citizen. It's crazy because I mean, I lived my whole life in Macau, uh, learned the language, studied the language, like went to school in that language. And then America like welcomed me with open arms. Like as long as I paid my, you know, like Im the immigration fees and be honest and, and like actually have a genuine love like relationship, like America accepts you. I mean, I was, I was a Macanese that wasn't a Macanese by law. Like, and there are people like me as well in Macau or maybe even Hong Kong or maybe somewhere in Asia, maybe even somewhere in America, to be honest. Now that I realize like the immigration thing is like, it gets a toll in people and Fun fact, what I realize at least, like usually it's the Im immigrants that are more like knowledgeable in the immigration laws, all right? Because the, my whole life in Macau, people are like, how you're not a Macau resident? And I always have to explain their own laws to them, which is annoying. And then the jokes always comes in like, oh, how about marry blah, 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 get big, marry blah, 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 get a white card. There they call it white card, by the way. You know, this is going to be a beginning of this awesome life with Paji journey. Um, so I'm technically a fob. Fresh out the boat, you know, fresh out the boat. Ah, pun of the day. Let's do, I think I want to do pun of the day because I'm like very punny. I'm not Punjabi, but I'm Sri Lankan. <laughs> hey Google, what's Punjabi? Punjabi. 
Sometimes spelled Punjabi, is an Indo-Aryan language native to the Punjab region of Pakistan and India, spoken predominantly by the Punjabi people. With approximately 148 million native speakers, it is the eighth most spoken native language in the world. Oh, ah, that's nice to know. So I am half Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan mixed. I'm Sri Lankan Filipino mixed. So yeah. I'm Pani, but I'm not Punjabi. Eh? I'm Sri Lankan and Filipino. We. Oui. Thanks.